everyone in this video we're going to talk about a text editor and how we can add some ai features to it so for example here i have a text editor and i can say something like today is and i can press forward slash and now i get a palette here with some ai feature so i can say for example uh, continue the sentence so if I click on continue, it's actually going to ask AI to finish the sentence. And here I get a response back. I could format it to be on the same line, but I, but I kind of like that it's below here so I can review it. And I know the exact piece that is coming from AI. And now I can just put it like this. And now let's say I want to shorten it a little bit. I can press forward slash again and I can uh, pick shorten here. It's going to ask AI to shorten this. Now you can see it's a bit shorter. Let's try it again. Shorten. And now it's three lines and I can also ask AI to rewrite here actually. Uh, yeah, so now we have a really powerful AI editor out. So in this video, I'll show you how you can get this text editor. And I'm actually using for a while I hear they're also today's sponsor. I had a great time using them so far. And the text editor that for a while I gives you is very extensible. So if you want to add those AI features that I just showed you, it's very easy to do. So with Frawala out of the box, you get a bunch of powerful options. You can configure it in pretty much any way you want. And so all of the traditional text editing that you would expect are included, but we can add way more to this toolbar here. We can do all sorts of customizations. Check out my other videos with Frawala. But in this video, I want to show you how to add some more AI features because we live in the age of AI. So you probably want to use an editor that actually allows you to do that as well. Okay, and it's going to be very easy. And let me show you how. So let's say you have some page here and you're building an app, maybe a React app. So let's see, I have a Next.js application here, but it's mostly just React. So I have a page here and I want to add the Frawala editor on the page. So Frawala actually offers a React component, which you can just get from NPM. So they have the Frawala editor uh, package here. You can see it's a, what you see is what you get editor. So, so those features that you would expect are included there. And then they have their React bindings in this package so then to use it on your page you need to import this so we can just import the css file so it's styled properly now i'm using next.js here next.js runs both on the server side as well as the client side and i actually only want to use this component on the client side so i'm using a dynamic import here for the javascript and then also for the package here the react component basically if you do it this way it's going to be only for the client side so i'm basically setting server side rendering to false here and then i can add the for a while editor the component here on the page right so here in my react i'm just returning this component here so here i can set a tag so how it should be rendered on the page it can be just a text area and then here we have all the options but before i show you that we also have model here so what you actually see as text inside the uh, box here that's going to be this model here this can be just a state by default i just have empty so there is nothing here but if i do test here for example we see test we see test here on the page okay so by default i don't have anything and because of that i only see placeholder text now so where is that placeholder text coming from well, that's one of the many, many options that you get with Frawala. So this is the reason why Frawala is so powerful, because now if I go to config here, here we can configure pretty much all the options that you would uh, come up with. So I have one option here for placeholder text, right? So here I can then say, if right, so if there is no text, it's going to be this. There are many, many options we can specify here for Frawala. If you want to see a complete overview here, check out their options page. So here under options, you can see all the various options you have to configure it exactly like you want. And you, these are some, some of those are uh, simple things like the colors, or maybe you want to add like colors or disable right click, right? Things like that. Some of them are a little bit more intermediate. So you can add custom buttons to the toolbar, for example. Um, you can allow image uploads. Maybe you want to have an integration with file stack to allow users to upload images, for example. Those those are all possible. You can make it even more advanced. I actually have a video on using Frawala as a page builder, actually. So what you see is what you get, page builder. So you can configure it in pretty much any way you want. And you can get a lot done with just these options that you get out of the box. You also get events. So the editor exposes events. So in this case, you can see I have an end, I have a key here for events. So if the user is typing something, there's going to be a key down event and we can hook into that to do something. In this case, what we want to do is when the user types a forward slash, we want to do something. So I'm hooking into the key down event and 
if the user has already submitted some AI request, we're just going to return here. But uh, before we even get there, if we're just going to check if that is indeed a forward slash. Um, we, we may want to save the selection of the, of the text in the editor. So here I can just uh, type or so I can say today is a beautiful and then I can press forward slash. The reason I see this uh, pop up here is because here we're setting or the palette, we're setting the palette state op to open value to true. Right now I'm doing some other things to make sure that when the user closes the palette again, that we can also show the, cur the caray, the, the blinking cursor back at the end of or some other place that we want. I want to focus the palette as well. So then there are some other events that I'm using here. So key up is when the user lets go of a key and click. We're also uh, doing something here with carrot. Basically to make this a good uh, user experience, I can use the events that Frovala exposes to really get exactly what I want with this text editor. Okay, and when the editor is initialized, we're just assigning it to a ref here in React so we can manipulate it in other places as well. And that is in a nutshell how this works. So if I type here, if I now want to allow AI to finish the sentence, I press forward slash. So we open up the palette. Now what happens if the user actually clicks on anything here? Let's say they click on uh, continue. They can also use enter here, by the way, or escape to close it again. So in that case, we get the, the blinking cursor back here. But let's say they actually do click on the continue here. What's the flow here? Well, then we're rendering that pop-up in the UI. So here we have some state. If the palette is open, we're just going to render a div here. The user can escape here, for example, to close it again. In that case, we're setting the state to false, but also we can make the Frovala editor focused again. Uh, we can just get a reference to it and then just manipulate it. But if the user presses enter, for example, when they're on continue, well, in that case, we want to send that command. So here we're sending a command and when we get a result, we're going to place it back in that Frovala editor. So here we're going to start off with a loading state. Now, first we need to actually Right, when we when we see a loading state, you will see that it's going to be blurred out, and we have that sending uh, notification there. So, so that is just the loading state. So in the meantime, what we're doing is we're making a fetch call to our own backend in this case, API AI, and we're sending along the HTML of the editor. Right. So remember, with Frovala, you get the HTML uh, prop in that component to read but you can also set the actual text that you see inside the editor one of the benefits is it allows us to easily manipulate it but also to easily grab it for so that in in this example we can actually send it along to an ai model so it, we're sending it to an api endpoint here because we do need to interact with open ai for example and in that case well you do need to have a secret uh, api key so in this case i have an api key and we can send along a prompt basically asking it to uh, continue this or if the user picked the, the other ones it's going to be a shortened prompt or the prompt will have something about rewriting it so we're just going to stream from OpenAI, right which is just a standard uh, api call to open ai uh, nothing fancy going on here we will eventually get a response and that's what we will also return from this api endpoint right so then here on the front end we will also get a response what do we do with that well we're going to get some text and that is ultimately what we set in the editor html again so i'm actually doing it with the ref here it would probably be a little bit cleaner to do it with the set html right if we're keeping track of it that way but we can pretty much manipulate the editor in any way we want so if it's continue we're basically adding it but if the user clicked on shorten or rewrite we actually want to replace it in this so that is basically the flow of things here so now if i say uh, continue we get a loading state we just have to wait a second or a couple seconds and we get a result here from OpenAI in this case and yeah it looks good and i think it's a great user experience i think it's also what users are expecting these days if you're building a text editor there's going to be some ai features that users expect I think these are some really nice ones, uh, easy to rewrite. I, I think Shorten is also a great one. But yeah, you can get a really great text editor setup here, including AI features with Frawala. I had a great time using it. You can get as advanced as you want. Check out my video on a page builder if you want to see how advanced really. But if you just want to add some AI features, then I think Frawala is also a great choice. You can just hook into those events and make it work exactly like you want. So I would say check them out. You can find a link in the description. In any case, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.